welcome back. This is your first session. Welcome, welcome. Are you excited? I, I don't know if any of you caught the news today. Punxsutawney Phil said that we're going to have a uh, an early spring. I don't know how people feel about that. Are you excited? Uh, here in Denver, it never stays the same weather. So 60 today, snow tomorrow. So throw your name in the chat. Say hi. What's your word of the day? How are you feeling this morning? Throw in your name and your, and your feeling. How are you feeling today? I know it's been a lot. We've talked about this entire week, but we've got really excited about the last day of lineups here. We've got an amazing guest this morning, Christina Heilig. Um, she actually works for Dewey's Pizza. So does some learning and development. She's a learning and development manager, uh, but also had experience in the space as being an instructional designer and instructor um, and communications. She's got a lot, a lot of things to share with you. Fun fact, she also used to be a former teacher, but found found love in helping adults and, and in that space. So I, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Christina and let her take it away. Make sure you feed your questions through the Q&A and we'll make sure to grab those as they come in. Perfect. Thank you so much, Abby. I appreciate that setup. Um, yeah. Hi, all. I am so happy to be here. As Abby had mentioned, I'm a former teacher and I was telling her before we joined officially today that I feel like I lost five years of my career potential because I didn't understand, I didn't even know about instructional design. So for me to be able to give back and help others who might be exploring that transition just makes me feel really happy to do so. And um, please see me as a resource if I can help you with anything regarding that transition. So, okay, today we're going to talk about project management in MS Teams. I have a little bit of a disclaimer and that is MS Teams is actually going to be improving a lot of what we're seeing today. Um, in spring, they're going to be offering kind of the basic free plan that we'll be showing today. And then they'll also be offering a second tier called their premium um, plan, where they'll have more AI capabilities for like project management and different tools and charts and graphs. So um, rest assured that what I show, you'll still be able to do but you'll also have added benefits if you choose to, to pay for them. And I'm in no way affiliated with Microsoft. I just want to make that known. Okay. We're also going to use um, ChatGPT really quickly just to get us set up. Um, but before we do that, I just want to make sure, does everyone know what a, a Kanban board is? And have you used them maybe in Trello or Asana? Um, basically, it's like, any tasks that are in a backlog are in this like backlog, you know, column, things that you're working on are in doing, you know, or you're reviewing the things or you're done and you're moving these task cards from one column to the other. We're going to be doing something similar in MS Teams, but the way that I use like the Kanban board is I actually keep them in their buckets, which for me is project phases. And I'll explain why, but just so you know, a lot of what we're seeing today, you can use in any of these sort of um, tools that offer similar functionality like Trello, Asana, Monday, ClickUp, different things. So, okay. I had a question here that asked um, if there's any type of project or projects that you're currently working on that could use some project management structure. I'm asking this because then I'm gonna take that type of um, project. We're gonna go to ChatGPT and have it um, crank out the different project phases for us to bill an MS Teams uh, planner and task cards. So I'm going to take a quick peek at the chat. Do we have any projects folks are working on? Um, let's see. Training, no, for one, nurses, one. training for nurses at a hospital, different teams with different levels of organizations and speed as in like giving feedback. So that would be like role based development, I would think. Um, Let's see, an orientation with a group of RNs. Okay, so we could say, build out a project plan for orientation training. That might work. Emergency procedures. I think what we could do to keep it from being too specific to any type of um, field is we could say, outline the phases of an instructional design project. So what I did is I went to ChatGPT, it's just a website, um, and we could say for nurses. Let's just see if it does anything different with that. All right, enter. 
So it's, it's creating like needs assessment, goal setting, content development, tech integration, pilot testing, refinement, et cetera. So we could use those phases. We could also even go more high level and use Addy, analyze, design, develop, implement, evaluate, right? But let's go with ChatGPT and um, let's build out these different phases in MS Teams based on that output. All right. So when you enter MS Teams, you'll see this little icon with people on the left. Just click that. That's your, now you'll see your teams. We just have one team showing right here. It's the training and development team. Um, to create a new team, you just click this plus icon. Something I want to mention about the teams are that it's basically the surface level of something bigger and more complex that's going on in the back end. So, for example, um, sometimes we use apps, but apps don't have all the functionality that a website version of that offering provides. Very similar here. What's going on is whenever you create a team, Microsoft is creating a SharePoint site in the back end which is much more capable. It also holds like your files and folders. Um, there's more functionality there. And the Teams version that we're seeing here is more just the surface level of that more complex back end. It's really where you get your collaboration and discussion and file sharing going. Um, so I mentioned that because it'll come back into play in a little bit. All right, so we're in Teams. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the planner projects that I've built out already. It's the ID project template. So this is really complex looking and I get that. And this is also why I don't move cards from phase to phase. I keep them in their buckets and I'll share why. So for example, when we're creating an instructional design project, I actually start with prioritizing the projects. So you can see this is like pre-project. Um, and one of the, the task cards I have for myself is that um, it's a reminder that I need to select two or three training initiatives for the upcoming quarter. And then I need to share these um, uh, with, with senior leadership and with stakeholders. Um, I need to create a project space for the projects that are given the go ahead. So it's creating a new Teams channel, creating a new task board and planner, um, folder organization, et cetera. Um, then we get into evaluation criteria. What is showing in this column? I, I know some of you will recognize level one, two, three, four through five evaluation. What is that? I'm looking in the checks. I know some of you will know that. Last call, shout it out in the chat. Which evaluation model is this for instructional design? All right, it's Kirkpatrick's. And the really important thing in instructional design is we know what we're even trying to accomplish before we start to design and develop the training. Um, it's our North Star. It's like the, the Google Maps of where are we even heading with this? And then we get more into our analysis, design, development, um, prototyping, developing, quality assurance, final review, communication strategy, implementation, project retrospective. So can you imagine if I had all of these tasks way over in the first column, it would just be very overwhelming and I, I wouldn't feel like I'm very organized or that I could see the whole project um, at scale. So this is why I leave things in their buckets and just check off tasks and they disappear, but they're always accessible if you want to open them back up. And that way things just stay in the buckets. So what we're going to do is recreate um, one of these plans using the phases that ChatGPT gave us for a project. And then I'm going to show you how you can um, create a template that you set once and then you just keep reusing. Because imagine how much time it would take to set up this project plan every single time I needed it. So I'm going to show you that. It's not something um, that's really easily just built in. It's kind of a bit of a workaround, but it saves so much time and people are like, oh yeah, that's worth it. So I want to share that with you today. I'm going to pause any questions that you see, Abby, 
up to this point. I don't point see where... any questions. Wendy said, I went to get a coffee refill and was shouting Kirkpatrick at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. get to the computer in time. Oh, it looks like maybe we do have a question. I'm going to put it on the stage here so everybody can see. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't create that. I just Google searched. So I'll do that again to show you what I did to find that. Um, Kanban board. So if you go Kanban board and click images in Google, you'll see all sorts of different kinds. So this is the one that I referenced. It's from Wikipedia. So it's a, a typical setup. Um, and like I said, I'm not moving my cards from phase to phase or bucket to bucket. I'm just leaving my cards where they are and checking them off to keep my project phases clean and so I can see them all at once and not have a huge backlog um, list of tasks that just makes me feel like anxiety and overwhelm, you know. So I hope that answered it, but let me know if not. All right, back into Teams. All right, so let's go ahead and, and start to build um, a plan. I'm going to have us create, do I want to do a new team? Yeah, let's do a new team. Um, no, we're first going to create an channel and I'm going to explain why. Okay, let's create a channel within the same team. I'm going to call it TLDC um, channel demo channel. We're just going to make it available to everyone on this current team to have access. And there it is. So we're going to click TLDC demo channel. And in the top where it says add a tab with that addition or plus icon, we just click that. And then tasks by planner and task cards, I think it is, task by planner and to-dos is what it's currently called. You might not see that up here because it might not be an app that you've used yet or recently. It's showing for me because I use it frequently. But if you need to find it, just search for it and you can find it. It's a free app. So click it. I don't want to post to the channel about this. So I'm going to uncheck that. Um, and we're creating a new plan. Let's call it... Um, TLDC project plan, save. And here we are. So that screen that I had shown you prior with all of my tasks and project built out, this is how it starts. So you can imagine how like difficult and, and time consuming it would be to recreate that every time. Um, but I'm just gonna show you for the sake of how to build it, how to do a couple phases here. So the first phase, if we look back at ChatGPT, um, had needs assessment, and then it had two kind of subtasks. So let's use that. You just simply highlight to do up here and change the name of that first bucket. So we'll change that to needs assessment. And then we'll create a task for the two sub sub tasks that it provided in chat TPD. Identify the specific skills skills and knowledge gaps among nurses. Okay, so that's a task, but there's probably more things that go along with that. So the card is created, that's called a task card. If we click it, we can add more detail down in this checklist. So we could say, um, observe nurses completing certain tasks notate gaps in performance. We could also say run baseline data on current state of work behaviors, uh, whatever it is. So it might be like time spent, um, number of errors, whatever it might be, find data that you can then point to later and say, we impacted that KPI. So that's how you build out the checklist. I like to show the checklist on the card. So when I click this, you'll see it over on the left show up on the card. 
I like that because sometimes you'll see tasks and you think, oh, that's an easy task. But I want my stakeholders and SMEs to see all the little things, all the subtasks that go into completing just a single task, right? Another cool thing is that when you have it showing on the card, you can check off those checklist items without even entering the card. So it's a bit of a time savings as well. Um, then we can also assign cards to different individuals. I'm going to assign this one to my teammate. And um, we can also add labels. So I don't use labels a whole lot, but it could be helpful if you're working with cross department, cross departmental teams. So for example, you could make this pink label uh, called marketing. Red could be called finance. Yellow could be like, so it could be different departments. It could be whatever you want. And then that way, when you're filtering tasks by department, um, you'll see just those that are flagged or labeled appropriately. Um, Tess, when she's assigned to this card, can indicate like, yep, I've started this task. It's in progress. Um, so that gives me an idea that it's started. We can indicate how urgent this need is. I'm just going to leave it at medium. Um, I'm going to call the start date today and the due date tomorrow. Does not repeat. You can add more notes. You can add links, um, resources, reminders. You can add attachments um, for every single task card. And again, it can be your own files, it could be URL, whatever you need to really give your folks what they need to self-serve for this task. Um, and then let's say Tess has a question. She could start typing in the comments, at Christina, I don't understand this, or could you remind me about this, or where is this data or resource? Um, and in that way, I know exactly what we're talking about because I'm going to get notified and that the link is going to take me right to this task card. So really helpful for collaborating. Got a couple questions here that are they're coming oh. in hot. So All I'm right. going to go ahead and, um, and share Wendy's. we got a couple to get through here, but okay. um, I use Teams pretty heavily and have a team for each course I'm working on. Any tips or, for uh, tabs or using Kanban boards uh, to add to each channel? Um, that's what we're doing currently. Uh, we just, you, you're, this, this is the training and development team and I had created a new channel and then clicked the plus icon to add a plan per channel. Um, let me know if that doesn't answer what you were looking for. So maybe we can circle back on that one. Got it. Karen's got another one here. Might have missed something at the beginning. Uh, you were mentioning Asana, Trello. Um, do you use Teams instead of others or in conjunction? I've used others. Um, I really enjoy MS Teams the most uh, out of all the ones that I've tried. I've tried Asana and Trello. Um, I like it because it's typically, if, if you're in an organization and everyone has MS Teams, then it's so easy to do the at Joe Smith or whatever, and like everyone's in your org already, so it makes that collaboration easier. And then I really like how MS Teams creates a SharePoint site per team. So then you also have like this fully fledged, even higher functioning space to do even more outside of the actual app itself. That said, um, I, I mentioned that at the beginning to say like a lot of what you'll see could also be replicated in other tools. I mentioned that because not everyone has MS Teams. I was gonna say, I think it's pay for, but I believe Slack, I think also has a similar function where you can collaborate together in channels nice. and things like that. I probably largely dependent on what organization, organizational tool you have. Um, so good question though, Karen. It's always good to stay organized. Definitely. All right, I think we have one more. Oh, sure. Stacy had a question, but I put, I put it up here in the channel. Currently, I'm doing work that would not involve using Teams for planning, using this time to um, learn, articulate, job descriptions, list team. How can I experience, get more experience or get familiar with Teams? You can install Teams for free on your own device to even try it out um, and ask your workplace to, if, if you have a workplace now, if, if they mind if you install a free version um, for your own purposes, but that's a way to do it. And then you can invite family members or friends to kind of interact with you just to kind of test things out. Um, I'm just creating a project plan now by myself. And so I'm getting, you know, more experience with doing that. So I think there's a lot you can do on your own or with peers and peer groups. So, and that's there interesting. There might also be a LinkedIn course too. I'm just guessing. There's LinkedIn courses for everything. So you might look at that. 
LinkedIn, YouTube, there's an entire YouTube channel on a gentleman who just goes through MS Teams uh, topics. So yeah, definitely. And that's kind of honestly a, a little bit of a weird thing to me to have in a job description. Um, so also just be mindful, is a job description focusing too much on a single tool? Why? Or is it like you need to be an expert in Addy? That might be a red flag. Um, so just be mindful of where you're applying to. <laughs> like, why does that matter so much? The okay. job insights we've just learned. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. We'll carry on here until we got some more questions. Sure. So we just filled out a task card. That's it. You just click outside of it and it exists. Um, and just to show you real quickly, um, I can check off this task item. I could check off that task item. I could check off the entire card. It disappears, but it's always here if you want it. It's there. It's ready. Okay. So, and then to create your next bucket, you just continue on. I think ChatGPT said the next one would be goal setting. So I'm just going to say goal setting really quickly and add your tasks for that. Next bucket, next bucket, next bucket. And that's your plan. Um, okay, let's get back to the idea of reusing a plan, though, as a template. I want to show first what not to do and why, and then I'll show what to do and how um, or why to do it the other way. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to pretend that we're going to stay within this same team and we're going to go to my fully fledged project template. And um, just as a reminder of what that is, we're going to go back to our new channel that we created and say, I want to create a new task by planner, but instead of creating a new plan, I want to use an existing plan from this team. So I'm going to find ID project plan. I don't want to post about it to the channel. We're going to click save and voila we just got that project plan template inserted into our new TLDC demo channel. Sounds great, but it isn't. And I'll show you why. <laughs> um, if we look at the level two, so we're in our second bucket of establishing evaluation criteria. Let's go to this level two learning card and check off the second of two subtasks. So now you can see that one of two of these checklist items is checked off. Now let's go back to that other channel, the general channel where we got the template for this plan from. We'll open up the plan here, go down to level two. What is problematic about what you're seeing here? And feel free to pipe up or add it to the chat. While I'm waiting for that, um, someone asked about what ADDIE stands for. Analyze, design, develop, implement, evaluate. So it's Addy with an E at the end, um, and you can Google it. It's a model for designing and developing um, instructional design content. But if someone, especially a job posting, is focusing way too much on that, I, that would be a bit of a red flag for me. Like, does the hiring manager, does the learning and development manager or director really have an instructional design background? Because Addy is just, just like um, a project management model with, of like initiation, um, execution, monitoring, like all that. It, they're just, it's just a very broad model. So just be cautious if somebody's saying like, you need to be an expert in Addy. What does that even mean? Um, okay, there you go. All right, so um, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I like the haha. -ha, thank you. My, my Friday snark is coming out. Apologies. All right. So I don't see it in the chat, but I'm going to call it out. And I'm sure some of you realize what the problem is here. Yes, Karen, it's already checked off. So when we checked off level two, um, this, this one of the two checklist items in this card, it also checked it off in this general channel. So whatever channel is using this template, it's checking it off everywhere. That's a problem because then our projects aren't really separate and clear and have their own progress, right? So what do we need to do? We need to create a new team because remember the back end is, is like the same for an entire team. So we need to create a new team to get that separate SharePoint back end. And so this is where the bit of the workaround comes in. 
It's not that difficult though, so I'll just, I'll show you. We are going to create a new team and we're gonna create it, I think from scratch is what I want. Let's try that. It's going to be public. I'm gonna call it TLDC new team, create. And I think it takes a minute, so we might close out to go back. Okay, voila, on the left, we've got our TLDC new team. Cool. Um, we need to go back to the other team and open it in its browser where there's more functionality to copy the plan to this new team. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna go to general. Um, actually, I need to open this in browser. Remind myself how to open in browser. Um, template maybe. Here we go. Okay, so when I went to the general team and there's this little carrot next to ID project template, click that and you can see open in browser. You're gonna get more functionality there and we need this particular piece of functionality. Just go up to this little three dots kind of in the center of the screen and click copy plan. We're gonna add this plan to the TLDC new team. I don't want the priorities or dates to be copied over because it could be different on a project by project basis. But I do like the description of the plan, the checklist, subtask items, and labels to remain the same. So I'm going to just click copy plan. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go back into MS Teams. Now we're in our new team. Go up to this add a tab, tasks by planner, use existing plan, and it's the copy of the ID project plan. And there we go. Now let's do our test. Remember the test we did last time? We said level two learning card. Let's check off this second checklist item. Now, actually, we're going to do a different one because I, what I'm trying to prove is that it doesn't change in the other team's plan. So let me uncheck that. We'll do it for level three. So we'll check off one of three of the level three task items. Now let's go into the original team and project plan. And you can see level three has all three items unchecked. So you've got a clean template now. And it's just creating the new team and copying the plan. Um, that's the big thing that I wanted to show you. I can show additional things, but I wanna pause and, and get caught up on any questions or you know, show me that again or different. So I'll pause there, Abby. And oh yeah, definitely. I think Jesse makes a good point, just being careful uh, copying templates because I've been guilty of that too. I just get happy like sending templates and oops, then you realize three three down the line that that was not the right one. So I think it's a good idea to just be careful. I'm not familiar with Loop, but got any thoughts about Loop? I don't. I do not have experience with Loop. I've, I've heard of it, but I have not explored it. Maybe someone else can do a session on that someday. <laughs> I feel like there's a new tool every day. So yeah. I was just, we're just trying to keep up here. Uh, let's see here. We've got Wendy had a task by planner. Oh yeah. So you also have a task view. So I'll show that if we go over um, in the top right. So if you can see my cursor, I'm hanging out in the top right. You can click list to get a list view. Um, so some folks prefer list. I feel like I'm more visual and like to see the cards and the buckets of the phases, um, but others really enjoy lists. So you've got this view here. Um, we can also see charts. So the cool thing about the charts, um, especially when you get, get to assigning things to people and adding due dates and different levels of priority, you can start to see how many tasks have been started, how many are in progress, how many are completed the different priority levels on the right, um, the different buckets. And then you can also see team members and you can see like, who have we over 
loaded, who has capacity, maybe we can reassign some tasks to someone. And also you can assign a single task to multiple people. You just go back to the assign button and you can add more individuals. I'll pause there. Some seriously great information. I'm not sure. I, I'm just doing a check out here. I haven't seen too many reactions come through. Are you all feeling okay about this? Do you feel like, oh my gosh, that was a lot of information? Anybody out there? Everybody doing okay? Thumbs up. Okay, perfect. Cool. Okay, so maybe just more coffee. Not sure. Uh, it's a lot of information. Um, how does your role kind of tie in? I know you're not technically a project manager, but do you find that there's like overlap between your roles or? A hundred percent. So I came from a really large organization, which was Liberty Mutual Insurance, and there our roles were more niche because we had more folks on the teams. Um, I was asked to come aboard to Dewey's Pizza to build out their learning and development team. I had been kind of informally consulting for them um, for about five years beforehand, and they were just growing to a size where it was a necessity. So up until this week, I've been a team of one for a year. And so when you're a team of one, you are wearing all of the hats, project management, strategy, stakeholder maintenance, um, design, development, finding the tools, uh, finding the LMS, implementing the LMS, um, going and doing all of the analysis. Like I toured different markets. We've got, I think, 26 locations now and looking to expand. So honestly, it's been a year of analysis, essentially, and research and implementing our first digital and mobile learning platform. So I need this to stay sane. Um, I just got my first team member this week. I'm so excited to have Tess on board. She, she might even be here uh, with us now. And two things, I was like, I don't want to forget all the things I need to do. So I created this template. I realized that we might not hit every single task all the time, and that's okay, because I know if we're going to skip over anything, it's because it wasn't needed and not because I forgot. I just don't want to forget things, like even like communicating thank yous to subject matter experts who have helped us on a project. Also, having my first team member and being able to have a shared space where we understand every phase of a project where we have shared terminology and understanding of flow and responsibilities and deadlines is huge. And for me to be able to also plug in different URLs and resources within each task card to help support that person as they're learning about these things, we're kind of like building the plane as we're flying. Um, this will help with that. And that's what drew me to it. I, I love that. And I think it's things we don't think about if we come from education, we take for granted everyone's in the same place. And it's not the case. You got people in different time zones, locations that we all have to figure out and we all need to be in the loop. And it's 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 a lot of things to juggle all at once. Um, I think Stephanie had a question. Let me go ahead and, and put it on stage for everybody to see. Um, did you say that the task planner and your to do um, selected in the plus was an add on or is that native to teams? It's native. Um, you just need to click add a tab. And you're most likely not going to see the icon on the top left that we're using, Tasks by Planner. It's usually kind of more hidden. So what you have to do is just type in Planner, click Search, and it'll come up in your search results. Um, and it's a free add-on. Um, Microsoft will be offering, in addition to what we're using today, which is like um, this free app, they are going to be offering come spring a whole other suite of tools like this for projects um, that is more like AI integrated to help support your projects even more. But that's a, it looks like it's gonna be a paid plan called premium. So just know that that's coming too. Wonderful. I think Mark had a question. Um, Tips for keeping team members organized on a project when you're an outside contractor and the rest of the team are busy and they're hard to reach and you just kind of hang out waiting for someone to reach out to you. That's such a great question. And I'm so glad you brought it up because I can't believe I missed speaking to this, especially when you asked me, Abby, like, why are you using this or whatever? 
Um, a big, a big reason is it cuts down on stakeholder and subject matter uh, and project team member maintenance or not maintenance management. Um, it takes it off of me and it, it's the system. So if I enter a deadline or a due date for something, this in its in that task is assigned to someone then the system sends email notifications and reminders to the person that's assigned to that task to say, hey, this is due tomorrow, you know, or this is due today, or this is past due. And then I can get those notifications of past due things as well. But that's one great thing is huge time savings in that kind of management. And then the other really awesome thing is this builds in some social um, peer motivation and peer pressure to stay on top of your tasks because when everybody's assigned different tasks, everybody can see that and everybody can see what your due date is or your deadline. Um, and they can see when you're falling behind or whether you've got in progress or done, you know. Um, so, yeah, I hope that was helpful, but it's way more helpful than I think you would realize until you get like a big group of people working on something. And you're like, wow, we're, we're doing it. We're staying on track, staying on task. I only have to reach out to a couple people a couple times. That's a huge win. So. Never underestimate group accountability. I think we have that in the classroom too. All the kids help each other stay on task. Hey, this is what we're doing right now. You got group accountability. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, um, like if I type in my name right here and I say this is due tomorrow, I'm going to be getting a couple emails in my inbox that reminds me. And then the really cool thing is in those emails, it also links directly to this task card. So it's really really quick to just be like, oh, shoot. Yeah, I, I do need to finish that. Just click from your email and it opens up. So let, let the computer be the tap on the shoulder, not you. <laughs> Friends like, oh, no, what does she want again? I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's it's nice that you can have a the computer kind of automate. That's one less thing for you to think about. Yeah, um, kind of like an assistant sure. if you think about it that way. It's like a robot yes. assistant, you know? Exactly. Like make, make technology work for you. Um, do you personally prefer Kanban versus like Trello or, or Miro? I know a lot of them are, it's probably team favorites about what people want to use. I know there's, I've never used, I think Asana's pay for and their tools are pay for, but I know Trello and Miro are free. Yeah. I mean, I feel like probably every offering offers a premium level or a paid version of something, but you know, I don't want to speak out of turn because I'm not, I'm not an expert on tech and I don't stay up on it as much as, I could because I just have other things going on, but yeah, see what's out there. I also use Lucid Chart for mapping, which is similar to Miro, um, which is really good for outlining content in a way that's visual. Um, so you can see like the flow of this course to this course to this course to this on the job training, and you can just kind of map it out visually, which is nice. I would think getting familiar with some of these tools is important because every team you're going to work on uses some sort of project management board that just to stay on task. There's a lot, as Christina, you, you said, you, there's just a lot to keep track of and it gets lost if you don't write it down. Even the littlest, tiniest things can get lost if you don't keep track of them. So, that, And a good call out too is learn a tool that is similar to others. So like if you learned this, you'll really, you'll easily understand how to use Asana, Trello, or others. If you learn a tool like Lucidchart, you'll also understand how to use Miro and Visio. If you learn how to administer a learning management system and you go to another company and they've got a different learning management system, the navigation's going to be different. The look and feel is going to be different, but at least you'll you'll know how to get around, you know what you're doing. It'll just take a little bit. It'll take much less time because you're like, oh, I see. These are all kind of similar. It's just the look and feel and navigation is different between each, you know. It's a good call. That's a great call out, too, because it's so overwhelming to think about every like I could learn this and then I could go learn that. Um, but looking for a common tool starting there it is yeah. a great strategy, because once you learn one, you can pretty much navigate it. I don't want to say it's completely intuitive, but that's what the help function in Google were invented for to help you fill in the holes. Uh, let's see. I think we had a question from Wendy. I'm just going through making sure we got everything. Um, do you know if since our um, ID team uses tasks by planner, can I use tasks by planner in my own team's channels? Yep. So just go to your, I'll actually create a new channel just to demonstrate it. So in our TLDC new team, 
I'm going to click these three little dots and say add channel. I'm just going to call it test channel. And then what it is, is you're adding an app to the channel. So just like you add apps on your phone through Play Store or uh, like the iPhone store, just click add a tab. Um, oops, that didn't do what I wanted. And then see, it says search for apps. That's what you're doing. You're adding an app to your channel. So just find whatever app it is that you want. Like I mentioned Visio earlier, you've got whiteboard. Um, just click it, create a name for it if you want. And that's it. And then you just start it has an add on. Does it create conflicts if you do, if you do that, or it'll all just kind of jive together? Like it I'm sorry. Will it create conflicts if you're kind of creating things across channels? Is that what you mean, Wendy? If you have different channels, is that, can you elaborate on your comment in the chat? I'll give you a minute to type. I know I want to get my question out and I'm like, oh, I got to type it. We'll wait. <laughs> okay. Take your time. While, while Wendy types, uh, I'll ask, is there like one piece of advice, like maybe go back, if you could go back and tell, give yourself one piece of advice kind of starting your journey. Mm -hmm. I, know, I wish I knew what I knew now and I, I feel like I wasted my five years of my career. But if for people starting out, what yeah. one big piece of advice would you give them? Um, really get solid on the foundations of instructional design, like your different models, your strategies, your evaluation um, strategies. So for example, if I could just type a couple things, I'll open a Word document. Oh, it looks like we did answer Wendy's question. So that's great. Oh, good. Um, so get solid on your instructional design foundations. So models, I did mention Addy. That's like a really bare kind of basic model, which just reminds you what you need to do. So again, analyze is like analyzing the need or the gap. Um, design is designing either the training or the learning experience or the resources or the performance job aid. The next D is development, and that's just developing the content or the experience. I is implementing it, which is like thinking about how am I going to implement this? Is it going to be in person? Is it going to be hybrid of in person and online? If online, how are we presenting it? Is it a video on Vimeo with like a Google form to collect answers to questions that we pose? Do we have an LMS, which is a learning management system where all training and where people take training and you can report out on it? Um, and then evaluating. Um, evaluation is huge. And you might think when looking at Addy that you need to go in a linear fashion, A, D, D, I, E. No, we actually need to start with um, like A and E. So you're analyzing even the need and then E saying, okay, now that I know what we're working with and I have like some baseline data of the current state, I can make this bigger too. <clears throat> we now need to understand what is our desired state. So we know the current state, what is desired state? And that's your gap, that's your performance and or knowledge gap. And that's what you're trying to fill or narrow. Um, and then E is like, how can I evaluate that what I implemented was even successful? And I can point you to a couple different models of evaluation. One of them is the Kirkpatrick model. It used to be four, four levels, but now I think it's five. Um, it's reaction, meaning typically smile sheets, unfortunately, of like, did you like the training? Did you find it practical for your needs? Um, L is learning. That's kind of like the knowledge checks that are built throughout the training experience or learning experience. 
Um, it can be like little quizzes. Um, roll bar behavior. So are we seeing what we set to achieve actually happen on the floor, on the job? So are they taking what was learned in the training and applying it? And then result is um, did we impact the KPI? Like at the beginning, we, remember I said we want that baseline data. What is it? Is it that the calls are taking two minutes too long at a call center? Go get that data and mark it with a date that on this date, 75% of calls are two minutes over what they should be. Have that with you because then what you want to see when you're done with the implementing of the, the training or the, um, I'm looking for the right word, intervention. There we go. It's not always training. It could be a job aid, right? Um, anyway, what is the result on that baseline data? And that's how you can then help to prove your ROI of the training itself. This is kind of the new phase of Kirkpatrick um, to say, okay, because we impacted that KPI, it translates into this, uh, this many minutes or hours saved per you know call or day or week, which translates into um, lower costs for labor because we don't need folks taking you know calls as, as much or as often. And the, the thing that I'm thinking about is in this example that I kind of threw out there of a call center is it was actually the systems that weren't talking to each other. It wasn't a training issue. It was we needed to make the business case to get an IT issue resolved. Um, and so there was big ROI on that. And it was funny because it wasn't even, it didn't even end up being training. But that's also why I'm trying to shift my career from instructional design to performance improvement because we think beyond just training. There's other options sometimes to resolve something. Another model is LTEM. I'm just going to leave that there for you to Google. That's another evaluation model. It's one that I want to use. Um, it's Will, I'm going to butcher his name, Tallmeyer. I know I'm saying it wrong, but that's another evaluation model that I would like to explore someday. Uh, yeah, get your foundations down, join your groups on LinkedIn, especially. Um, when I say groups, I, I mean things like Association of Talent Development. There's a national uh, chapter, and then you'll also have regional chapters um, that you can join for pretty inexpensively, build out your network, start to learn, start to give back. Um, if you're in hospitality or restaurants, there's chart. Um, if you are brand new to instructional design and wanting to learn more, I would recommend checking out Idle Academy by Dr. Robert, uh, Robert, Robin Sargent, apologies, Robin. Um, there's even a free seven day self-led course that you can take online. Again, um, not affiliated, uh, so just info I know. Um, yeah, join your groups, what else? There's different certificate programs you can earn. You can also get free trials on so many different tools and they're usually about two weeks. So think about like Beyond for animated video creation. Um, you've got Camtasia also for like screen capture and editing. You've got free audio editing tools like, what's the one that you can download? Audacity. Um, another screen capture tool is ScreenPal. You can get free trials of Articulate Storyline and Rise, unless they've done away with that. I don't know, but I've done it before. I really like Rise a lot. Mm, oh, check out your new AI tools. There's new AI voiceover tools, which are fantastic. We're using Well Said Labs so that we don't need to hire for voice talent. We just type in text and pick an avatar's voice, and we use that audio. Um, and Did another one come through for LMS. I think iSpring has a free trial for their LMS, I think. Uh, are there others? Um, yeah, LMSs, that would be kind of hard to get free trials on unless it's like a cloud-based light version, I'm thinking, because typically you would have to be working with the RAVs, because I just went through this, you work with the RAVs and they get you set up with a sandbox environment and there's there's a bit of a lift there for them. 
Um, but I'm thinking you could probably do that with, I think Moodle is still free. Check that out. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think iSpring has another one. They've got great webinars. So if, you, if you're willing to sit through that, just kind of plugging their, their platform, uh, there's a lot of good information you can glean from there. They also have a, a learning hub on LinkedIn. Uh, but that might be a good place to, to check. I know some of those are open source and others are like, nope, you got to have a specific type of, uh, of platform. And yeah, so anyone else that has more experience, definitely feel free to throw your opinions in the chat. Uh, yeah, we, I know we have a lot of folks in various stages here, but it's always nice when you're starting out to have people that kind of know the ins and the outs, give you give you some places to start. Um, let me circle back and look at our chat here. It looks like we have it. I want to do one more call out. One more call out on what should I be focusing on if I'm new to instructional design? Yeah. Method over modality every time. Like don't you know, when you're thinking about designing training or some sort of intervention, if you have a tool in mind and you're like, oh yeah, I could definitely use this tool and you're going to let that drive what you end up creating, that's a fail because really you should be focusing and spending the majority of your time and energy on just getting the method down, meaning solid instructional design, like that instructional design document, making sure that you've got solid objectives, goals, um, assessments that link back to the objectives so you can measure what you say you're looking to measure. Um, get that down, Pat, and then have fun thinking about the possibilities, which is like tools and modality. But That's such, not such great advice. I think, too, we are so caught up in, I want to make it do this and this and this. And if you can't get the basics down, no one really cares about how many bells and whistles you have because in an interview, if you can't explain your design process, uh, you're not going to be able to get the job. So as yeah. fancy as you want to make things, uh, for those of you that don't know about MVP, make it MVP, minimum viable product. I know I first heard that. I'm like, oh, most valuable player. No, minimum viable product. Get familiar with that, that business term uh, and be able to really grounding your why and how you built it, because I think that's what interviewers really care. They want to know your thinking when you design something, not how many cool new things your your course does. Yeah. And make sure that when you're explaining it, that you're not explaining it to them in learning terms. The business does not care about learning and training, quite frankly, oftentimes. What they care about is that you're impacting an actual metric that they can measure, because ultimately the business is there to either um, turn a profit or to be uh, of service to their stakeholders. And so we have to use business language when we're talking about why we design something a certain way. And then as far as like you had mentioned, making things fancy or more complicated, I would err on the side of don't like yeah. be more. No, that's what I was saying. It's tempting, but don't do it. Like really, they just want the product to work because from what I've seen in project management is you're on a tight deadline and you got to hurry up. We don't have time to make it awesome and fantastic. It just has to work and let's get it out the door. And that serves you well for timely timelessness. If we're over engineering something, it's going to look dated really quickly. It's going to be over, it's going to be cluttered. It's going to be trendy looking. Um, and then also when you have to maintain these programs, especially if they're like e-learning to go back in where you've set up a million triggers and, oh, you might not even be at the company anymore. So somebody else is coming in and filling your shoes and having to figure out all of this fancy stuff that you did. That's a disservice, honestly. So just where you can keep it simple, that's probably the way to go. I would definitely, that's, I've seen that in so many places. Um, just wanted to make that call out as cool as it, as it is and all the tools, just, you know, we like it simple too. We don't want to be complicating things. When people are learning stuff, they don't, that's time they have to take out of their day. We don't want to complicate it. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you, Christina, do you have some time to hang out? Because I know we had a couple more comments about, uh, MS Teams, um, would it be okay if people kind of hung out at a table with you for a little while to to chat? Yeah. I think there's some more conversations going about tools and, and other things that could be helpful, but I know we're about six minutes out from, from being at the top of the hour. So I did see, Wendy, I know you got a lot of things that you want to say kind of about Microsoft Teams. Come meet Christine at the table. Um, come ask your questions. Come hang out. But I'm so glad that you were able to come and hang out with us and kind of impart your your words of wisdom, uh, especially for those folks who are pretty new to the design, the instructional design world. And I know it's kind of a lot to to kind of get yourself started. Like, where do I start? And there's too much. And how do I sort it out? 
Uh, so we really appreciate that. Would you be able to share your Word document? That would be so awesome if we could have that. I would feel bad. It's just, it's like chicken scratch. Oh, I don't think we're not going to judge that. Or even if you want to throw that into the feed, it, we're not judgmental about the, how it looks. I think it's just great to kind of have a, a little bit of a roadmap. Um, and I'll also say, is there anybody out there in our audience that's interested in learning about project management specifically as a potential career? I have a former teacher in my network turned project manager. So please DM me. Uh, she's offered to chat with people who want to explore project management. Um, definitely reach out to me and I will connect you with her. She's fantastic. Um, and you can kind of see what the overlap is or potentially explore it if that's something like, hey, that sounds cool. I want to do that. Um, but yes, we're going to go ahead and wrap the session. And anyone that wants to hang out with Christina, come find the table in the lounge and one more round of applause before we close out the session. This has been fantastic, so insightful and full of some amazing information. Thanks, all. Thank you for coming on a Friday, especially. So kudos yeah. to you for, for getting this in on a Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Well, appreciate everyone's time. Come visit at a table if you've got some time. Uh, Wendy, definitely DM me. I'll uh, I'll get you connected with my my call my former colleague here. So I, if we don't see you for the rest of the day and you got to dive into something else, no problem. We hope you have a fantastic weekend, but don't forget to log in. Those recordings should be available, uh, if not today, maybe over the weekend. I'm just going to take some time to get them up, but everyone have a fantastic rest of your day and enjoy your weekend.